Hey guys, it's Brandon Miniman from PocketNow.com, and this is the software tour of the Acer DX900. If you remember from previous videos, this is one of the very few devices ever to exist that can manage two phone lines from one device by having you insert two SIM cards into the back of the device. So in this video, we're going to take a look at the software on the device. Um, if you want to see what it looks like to manage these two phone lines, I'll put a link up on the video to the, uh, the video that shows using the two phone lines in action. So let's take a look at the software. I'm going to turn on the device with the button on the side and the screen has been rotated. I'll go through that soon. And what we're taken to immediately is SBB Mobile Shell 2.0. Um, as you know, 3.0 is out, which brings a lot of improvements, but um, this is actually the old version. But we still like the old version, right? So we can flick our finger, we can access favorite people, add new ones, flick our finger again, get access to our internet favorites and settings and multimedia. And this is a very customizable platform to allow you to really make it your own. Um, so we like Mobile Shell. We think it's a good addition. We just wish that Mobile Shell 3.0 would have been included on the device. So we can exit Mobile Shell by going to the exit button here and we're taken to the standard Windows Mobile Today screen, which is kind of bland and boring, but that's why they put Mobile Shell on top of it. Okay, so let's go into the start menu. And I'm having to use the stylus because I find the screen on this device isn't the most sensitive screen that uh, we've worked with before. So let's go through this. In games, we have the typical games, Bubble Breaker and Solitaire. Nothing interesting there. In GPS, we have some GPS utilities, such as GPS Viewer, which will let you give a, see a better idea of which satellites you're connecting with and that sort of thing. Location SMS will send your coordinates to someone via SMS. If we go to multimedia, we have the camera application, and the camera is a three megapixel camera, and there is, oops, gotta get it in focus here, and there is a flash on the camera, which is good. And it has rotated again. We have streaming player so that you can watch videos from m.youtube.com, mobile YouTube. Going down the list, we have some entries here in phone, such as Sim Manager, scenarios which will allow you to kind of set profiles if you want it to um, ring or vibrate, or, or depending on what you're doing outside, it'll keep the ringer at a very high volume. SPB Mobile Shell that just has some utilities in there. Um, we also have some utilities, backup utility, memory optimization, which is actually kind of funny. It will, on a regular basis, reset your device because Windows Mobile doesn't always close programs when you exit them. So the idea here is that you reset your device and all the memory gets flushed out and you're back to zero again. Default settings will bring it back to factory condition. Application recovery is if you accidentally delete some of the preloaded programs on the device and you want to bring them back. Voice Commander is a program that lets you control your device with your voice. And you don't have to train it, just like Microsoft Voice Command, so that's good. You can say, please call Bob, or uh, what time is it, or what's my next calendar appointment? Going down the list, we have Communications Manager. Let me show you what that looks like. It's a very finger-friendly communication manager. You can individually turn, off, turn on and off phone 1 and phone 2. And of course, phone 2 is the auxiliary phone line that you use associated with the second SIM card. Going down the list, we have some usual stuff, task manager, and that sort of thing. If we go into the start menu, we see that we do have the Office Mobile Suite included, which is good, so you can view PowerPoint, uh, Excel, and Word documents. Now, as you've seen a few times already, this device has an accelerometer built in so that you can do screen rotation in any screen, and the screen rotation is actually pretty fast. And you can't go down this, this way. It actually flips back the other way. And you can turn this off if it gets annoying. I would probably turn it off personally because I think having it accidentally rotate all the time, which it has been doing, is kind of annoying. Although you can change the sensitivity of it. So if we go into settings and we go over to system, gravity sensor, we can change the sensitivity right here. So if you want to make it low, then you probably won't have as many accidental rotations. So let's go back into the settings here. If we go into buttons, we have several uh, hardware buttons that we can customize to launch certain programs, which is good so that you can quickly launch email or um, G a GPS program like Windows Live Search at just a press of a button. We have settings here for phone one and phone two because obviously there are two phone lines on this device. 
And over in system, we can take a look at how much memory we have left. We've been opening a lot of programs. We don't have that much memory left, sadly, and I think this device uh, slows down significantly if, you, if you're using a lot of programs. So you're going to want to make sure that you're closing programs or exiting them if you have that option so that you keep free memory available. And finally, if we go into backlight, we can determine if the device uh, uses the uh, light sensor to regulate the screen brightness, which is always recommended so that you can um, maximize battery life. And finally, over in connections, we have nothing interesting here, although we, we have Connection Wizard, which will pre-configure the connection settings on your device to the carrier that you're using. So this is an international phone, and they have... Um, they have settings for many, many different carriers across many different countries. So I'm in the USA, and I went to... Oops, the list went away. And I went to AT&T Wireless. And by the way, this does have the bands necessary for AT&T 3G. As you can see up here, I'm getting a little H for HSDPA. So in terms of performance, as you've seen through this demonstration, it's a little bit laggy. Um, going from screen to screen is pretty fast. I have a concern about the amount of program RAM that is available when you start to multitask a lot. In terms of battery life, it's okay battery life, nothing great. You're definitely going to have to charge this every day if you're using you know, any level of, of email or GPS or Wi-Fi or things that take their toll on the battery life. And a quick note on the on-screen keyboards, this is the finger-friendly on-screen keyboard. It's called Easy Keyboard. Unfortunately, it's not arranged in a QWERTY fashion, and th thus it's very difficult to use. However, if you rotate to Landscape, you actually get a much better uh, layout of the keyboard that is quite large, and I have to say it's actually easy to use when it's this big. So let me try to type a little something here. Takes some getting used to, but uh, it's actually not that bad. I just wish that there was a QWERTY keyboard that, is, that was finger friendly that you could use in landscape. So it takes some getting used to, but it's not, it's not that bad. The, the keys are pretty big. So overall, I think the Acer DX900 is, is a good solution if you want a Windows mobile device um, that does two lines. It's really one of the only um, options that you have. I have never been a fan of Acer Previously, E10, uh, E10's quality, build quality, isn't that terrific on this device. It just doesn't feel high quality in hand like an HTC device. And I feel like the software is kind of haphazardly optimized. You know, they threw SBB Mobile Shell on the top of this to make it finger-friendly, but nothing else has been changed to be finger-friendly. The menus are small. I've had to use the stylus a lot through this demonstration because... Really, the screen isn't sensitive enough, and items aren't big enough on the screen to make it finger-friendly. So really, in the end, this is a mediocre device, but really uh, an okay choice if you're looking for a device that can handle two phone lines, which is a pretty unique capability. So that's it for the Acer DX900. If you want a device like this of your own, they're shipping right now at clove.co.uk. That's it for now.